film, The Hypnotist, as I was saying, the official section, The Hypnotist, and the press conference. And we have with us the director, Lars Hallström, and the actress, Lina Olin, and the producers, Peter Posne and Borje Hanson. And they are prepared to, to answer your questions. So please, first question, please. Seems there's a question at the back. Yes? Hi, good afternoon. I would like to ask uh, Lars Hanstrom on your right, on your right. La the question's for Lars Hanstrom. I'd like to ask you, the director, uh, what surprised me was the, ch the change in register. We're used to you having more of a fable type tone and uh, singing in favor of tolerance, but less, more, more light in your films. I don't know whether this had to do with the boom of the Scandinavian noir and detective uh, novels that are, that, are, that are being read nowadays. My interest in this project uh, was really, it was a combination of things. It was the prospect of coming home and working in, in Stockholm, my hometown, and spending like more than two days there. I haven't really been back there for 25 years. That was a great opportunity. I fantasized about doing a thriller. Uh, I've been offered in the United States. I, I'm not getting offered thrillers, really. So this was a great opportunity to try something different. And I also wanted to... Uh, that I've been accused almost of being too soft-hearted and and my films are heartwarming, and, and, uh, and I like that. I like to warm hearts, but I wanted to scare a little bit this time and, and to try to steer away from that mark of, of being soft-hearted and, and uh, even sentimental at times, which I think I'm not. I, I'm interested in strong sentiment, but really hate sentimentality. So, and it was a great part for Lena. That was another main draw. First row, front row. For the director as well. Um, I wanted to know if you had any particular reasons to choose the actor you chose for the lead role, if there was something you liked in particular for the hypnotist. Thank you. I think he's... Uh Really, the, to start with, he's the best actor in Sweden. Had he not had an, an accent with his English, I think it could be a world, uh, world class uh, movie star, really. <laughs> um, he's got the eyes, he's got the intelligence, he's got the, the, the voice. He had all these qualities that work so well for this part. Uh, and his got proven chemistry with Lena. They made another movie called Bang Bang Orangutan, and you could really, it was a, there was a tangible chemistry there. Uh, so they, there was a shorthand between them and a chemistry that I wanted to, to take advantage of. Further questions, yes. Hi, a question for the direct. A question for the director. The film looks at the private life of the protagonist. So that is, say, a life which isn't too happy. It seems, as as many Nordic novels or thrillers. In, did you were you interested in that aspect of showing what is hidden between behind that facade of happiness or? or modernity that exists in in your countries up in the north? I guess part of the attraction of the this this wave of Scandinavian crime or Stockholm noir or Scandinavian noir, whatever it is, is the fact that I think those films have a more low-key uh, color in the United States, uh, the thrillers tend to speak with a louder, louder voice, and, and we went the other direction and did something that felt very real and authentic. And I, what I wanted to do with this uh, film was to 
try something different to to make a a thriller that really focused on character that didn't sacrifice character for that plot so it was it's a bit of a, to me it's a bit of a hybrid of a of a relation drama and a thriller so I'm crossing over in genres here a little bit, or it's an experiment, really. This is, for me, an, an experiment to see if I could weave a family drama with a very plotted thriller. And also the ambitions to, with performance is a bit higher than, than I think, you know, we really wanted to do something authentic and uh, we improvised a lot and with the scenes with Lena and Mickey Pashbrandt, I, I take pride in, in those performances because they, to me, stand out and are exceptional, especially in, within this genre. Yes. Excuse me, but to insist, but I'd like to know how you've enjoyed or whether you didn't like or you don't like the boom of uh, Scandinavian detective novels. And also I would like to ask you and insist upon the tragic side of things uh, that films, that, uh, Dreyer and Backman, for example, some of that seems to be stuck in these tortured uh, characters in, their, in those films. Uh, so what can you say about all of that? I only watched the, the Millennium series and I really like those films. I haven't really followed the, the wave of uh, other detective stories of Sweden. Uh, I've been in the United States and I, I just wanted to try a different genre. And I and I wanted to try something different within that genre to actually renew it or, or you know, I had high ambitions with this one. And I haven't really looked at the other Swedish movies. I can't tell what the others are doing. Yes, please. Try this again. One, two, three. Hey, Jan Lundvold from Svenska Dagbladet. Oh, nice to see you far away from home, okay. all of you. I made a reflection when I saw this film um, that entered a bigger picture in Swedish cinema that is uh, spread all over the world. Uh, maybe 50, 60 years ago, it was always summer in all these films that were seen all over the world. The summer with Monica, and there was... She only danced one summer, and do you believe in angels, and so forth. These days, since some ten years back, it's all, always winter in all the Swedish films, like in Let the Right One In, for example, and mm -hmm. I think in the millennium it's not exactly summer. In this film there is one scene where it's not winter, and that's kind of a dream, dream scene. I'd just like to hear your reflections on kind of this season of Swedish cinema. If there are, if, the, if this is a coincidence, or if it's very important that you show the Swedish world from some kind of cold climate, mm -hmm. cold atmosphere, and also, I mean, very there is a good atmosphere to 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 the winters. So of course, that's important too. But if you have any thoughts, I'd like to hear them. Well, it starts with the commercial side of it, doesn't it? I mean, now it seems to be working commercially with with the darker stories and uh, um, I have no other explanation. We would probably have gotten, gotten away with doing this during summer, but it added a, a, a lovely quality to this. I, again, I can't compare with it. What do you think, guys? Um, remember, this it's an adaption of a, of a novel. And uh, I, I think the, the theme is really family, and the family in in in, uh, in trouble, and and I think that the authors wanted to place that in Christmas time because 
Christmas time is supposed to be the highlight of the family. So to find a contrast there, I think was more important for them than, than describing winter. I think it was more connected to Christmas. I think that's correct. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Good that we agree. <laughs> then we have a very long winter in Sweden also. And we have to produce films during the winter also. <laughs> Further questions, please. Yes, I would like to ask the director how you felt, how does it feel to shoot again in Sweden? Because you hadn't shot in Sweden since uh, my life as a dog. That is to say, how, well, how did it feel to go back to Sweden and film again after so many years? That's a question the moderator is asking you. You start. I unfortunately did not, uh, since it came from you, I did not put, but I think you asked whether, uh, how it feels to come back and work in Sweden, and uh, in Swedish above all. I mean, it's nice to be back in your home country and just spend and have the opportunity to reconnect. And we spent basically half a year in Sweden uh, making the film. Mm -hmm. And also above all, uh, for me as an actress, it's really um, incredible to work in, in my own language or my mother tongue because it, it, it is different. It, it makes more sense for an actor to work in his or her uh, first language. Hi. Also, for Alina Olin, I would like to I would like to ask you about the dramatic scene of the film. That is to say, to save your son in that case. How did you get prepared for that scene, and where do you draw strength to portray such a dramatic uh, uh, scene? Albeit uh, we we know that the film is a thriller. So how did you prepare for that? Uh, we we did a lot of homework uh, when it came to people who have actually been through uh, a traumatic uh, thing like like this, which is like the nightmare for any parent. Um, and we watched a lot of documentaries and we read a lot about, and there's material, because unfortunately we live in a world where this is uh, not, it happens. And, uh, and it was interesting. It's an interesting journey uh, to follow people and their irrational but somewhat emotionally logic reactions to uh, a tragedy like this. And I think that's what we did. And then we sat with Lhasa and rehearsed, which was a luxury. We had the first few weeks of the shoot, we spent inside the hypnotist's home. And we had spent at least a week rehearsing and going through the script. And it felt like we had the opportunity to put down a platform from which we could all then get into the thriller part of it and the getting in and out of cars because it's somehow easier as an actor. Uh, if you start with the getting in and out of cars, not that every movie has so many getting in and out of cars, but as, a, as a, an image of all the sort of walking and uh, doing um, transportation scenes, if you have your character within you, uh, which we got, had the opportunity to 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 grab our characters that those first few weeks because we did all the emotional and the um, the the tougher uh, part of the shoot that that was really golden for us at act, as actors. Any further questions? Any further questions, please. Yes, uh, over there. Mr. Holstrom has said he's very happy to go back to Stockholm to shoot. I would like to ask you, how do you address, well, how do you approach your career in Hollywood being so many years away? Do you see yourself, that is to say, uh, a director at the service of the big studios, or do you see a filmmaker, a type of ma maverick who doesn't matter, he can shoot wherever he wants throughout the world? How do you see yourself? Well, 
I think I've landed in a, I, I could go shoot anywhere, wherever the script takes me, really. So I guess I'm an international filmmaker. I, I kind of think I'm dividing, I do, uh, once in a while I do a bigger commercial picture for for the commerciality of it all. And uh, once in a while I get to do labors of love. <laughs> so I have, to, I have to do them both. The labors of love to, to yeah, the labors of love. So, but once in a while I go do a commercial film for the commerce of it all. So it's, a, it's an industry that mixes art and commerce for sure. And, uh, um, this one is actually a labor of love, if you wondered. <laughs> and the salmon fishing in the Yemen that I did before was also clearly a, a labor of love. Which we shot in Morocco, Scotland, London, this one in Stockholm. The, the one this summer I shot in North Carolina, uh, so I'm, I'm all over the place. <laughs> If we if we leave this film, what took you to make the remake of the Japanese Achiko, the remake that you made of Achiko? What took you to do that? Um, it was my dear neighbor Richard Gear, <laughs> who had this project, uh, and. Um, I think I did it for the for the love of him, and I had done a hoax with him, and really got to um, love him as a man and uh, an actor, and uh, and I had a little break in my schedule, and I went off, and we did this in Providence, uh, uh, north of New York, and I had a wonderful time. I love dogs. I got to learn to love the Akidas. We had three Akidas doing. Um, different parts of, of the, the story. One was trained to sit still, the other one was trained to be loving and jumping around, and the, uh, the third one was trained to do what? Yeah, to be old. He could, work, he could <laughs> walk as an old dog. So he walked in slow motion on command. Very strange. But they trained for half a year for the film. <laughs> Yeah, what else can I say? Um, the challenge of trying to turn something inherently sentimental into something that had some true sentiment. It is a little strange that with my allergy towards what's sentimental that I uh, took on this project, but I wanted to do it as, as straightforwardly and, and honestly as possible. Another challenge. Yes, at the back. Yes. For the director, back here. Yep. I want to ask you, what would be your following, your next project? You said that you've shot in North Carolina. I imagine you'll make another film in the US, but do you have any intention of going back to Sweden after this experience with this film? Yes, it's open... Um, it's opened doors and also mental kind of doors wide open to the possibility of, of going back and forth and I got to know these wonderful gentlemen here and and I'm really eager to come back and make more Swedish films um, no no precise plans yet but we have several things we're discussing and I want to return soon to make another Swedish film for sure. I'm not right now in post-production on the film I shot this summer uh, and it's called Safe Haven. It's a romance with thriller elements. <laughs> so it's a genre cross again. So that'll keep him busy till Christmas time. Hola, what
what else? Hi. You mentioned you. You mentioned a moment ago you're uh, sentimentally allergic, and this is a thriller film, and you wanted to get away from uh, the tone of some of your previous films. I would like to know whether in this thriller, uh, that at a given moment you thought, and shooting any of the scenes, that it might go towards to a, a sentimental moment, and you said, no, 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 stop, 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 this is a thriller, let's do it, let's get tougher, let's get a bit serious. Did that happen in any of the scenes? There were really no traps in this story when it comes to sentimentality. It, the family story was very straightforward and honest in trying to, for me to depict uh, the true horrors of losing a child and the irrational, seemingly irrational reactions to to that. That that was was interesting to us, wasn't it? The the complete uh, irrational behavior that rings emotionally true. I mean, that's fascinating to me in any film I make. You kind of reach out for those moments. You, re you reach for those moments. Um, no, I can't say that was anything that... Maybe I had a certain fear of m melodrama. Um, but I think we got away without stepping into it. There's a pretty powerful ending to it. That, um, but sentimentality, no, there was, it was, this was real. This was real. And I tried to be as real as possible with performances and with the family's response to this uh, kidnapping. Okay. Any further questions? If such is not the case, thank you very much to all of you.